Now that we have the monsters, let's add them to the locations and display them on the screen. I'll open up the solution in Visual Studio. And the first step is to create a new class in the engine project in the model's namespace, and we'll name it Monster Encounter. This is a small class. It only has two properties, the monster ID for the monster that you might encounter at the location, and the chance of encountering it. If a location only has one monster, we'd only create one monster encounter object, which would have that monster's ID, and anything we put in for the chance of encountering is going to be ignored since there's only one monster there. If we want to have two monsters, let's say a snake and a rat, we would create two monster encounter objects, one with the snake monster ID and one with the rat monster ID, and then we would put the chance of encountering in each of those objects. The way this is set up, the chance of encountering does not need to equal 100 or anything. Our random monster generation function is going to be smart enough to figure out the odds. So if you put in a chance of encountering of 1 for a rat and a chance of encountering of 9 for a snake, then our function is going to know there's a 90% chance that a snake is encountered there and a 10% chance that a rat is encountered th at that location. Step two is to modify the location class so that we can hold these monster encounter objects. I've added a new monsters here property and its data type is a list of monster encounter objects and we have it set equal to a new list of monster encounter objects so that it's initialized. We could add monster encounter objects directly to this property but I wanted this to be a little bit smarter. So I created this add monster function. To add a possible monster at a location, we call the add monster function, pass in the monster ID and the chance of encountering it. Then this function looks to see if the monsters here property already has a monster encounter object with that monster ID. If it does, then it gets the first monster here, the first monster encounter object, where the monster ID matches. It should only ever be one. And it sets the chance of encountering on that object to the newly passed in chance of encountering. So it just overwrites it. It doesn't add a new monster encounter object. If the monsters here does not have that monster, then we're going to add a new monster encounter object into the monsters here property. This is just a little bit of intelligence so that we don't accidentally add the same monster in multiple times. The next thing we'll do is write the function to get the monster from a location, which I've named get monster, and it returns a monster object. The first thing it does is it looks at the monsters here property and checks if there are not any monster encounter objects in that list. So if the list is just an empty list, this will return null. There is no monster at the location. The next thing it does is add up all the chances of encountering for each monster in the monsters here property. So if we only have one monster encounter object in the monsters here property, the total chances is going to be equal to that monster's chance of encountering. If we have multiple monsters, it's going to add up all of their chances of encountering so that we have a total. This is what we'll use to figure out which monster we actually return. The next step is to select a random number from our random number generator between 1 and the total chances. So if we had 10 monsters, their chance of encountering was each 1, then the total chances would be 10, and we're going to get a random number between 1 and 10. So let's say in this example, our random number is 3. Then what we're going to do is loop through each monster in the monsters here property, and we're going to figure out which one matches up with 3. We start with a running total variable equal to 0, 
and then for the first monster we look at its chance of encountering. In this case we have 10 monsters and they're all a chance of encountering of 1. We add that to our running total, so the first monster, the running total is 1. If the random number is less than or equal to the running total, then we're going to return that monster. We're going to call the monster factory and get an instance of that monster by its ID. In this case, the running total is 1, and 3 is not less than or equal to 1. So we go to the next monster. It has a chance of encountering of 1, so now the running total is 2. The random number 3 is still not less than or equal to the, ra to the new running total of 2, so we go to the next monster. We add its chance of encountering to the running total, now it's 3, and now this time the random number is equal to the running total. They're both 3. So this will return a new instance of that monster ID from the monster factory. And just to be safe, we have this final line here. If we got through all of our monster encounter objects, if we got through all of our monster encounter objects and none of them were less than or equal to the running total, which should never happen, but we always want to be safe just in case something is weird with our random number function, then we're going to return the last monster here object we're going to get its monster ID and return that monster. This way, if there are no monster encounter objects in the monster here property, then get monster returns nothing. Otherwise, it should return a random monster, and if we have a problem, we'll return the last monster that's in the final monster encounter object. And this is how we're going to encounter the monster when the player moves to a location. Step three is to modify the world factory class. Now we're going to actually assign monsters to locations. And the world factory class is where we build the locations. So that's where we'll add in the monsters. The first location we're going to change is the farmer's field. So after we add that location to the world, then we're going to say get the location at minus 2, minus 1, which is the farmer's field coordinates. Call the add monster function, passing in the monster ID of 2, which is the rat, and the chance of encountering. And here I put 100 just so we think it looks like 100%. And we're only going to have one monster in the farmer's field, just to keep it simple for now. Next we'll go to the spider's forest, location 2-0, and we'll add monster 3, the spider, and give that a 100% chance of encountering that monster. And finally we'll go to the herbalist garden, the location at 0-2, and we'll call add monster, passing in monster ID of 1, the snake, and give the snake a 100% chance of encountering it. Now that we have the monsters at the location, we're going to go into the Game Session class, and we need to add a current monster property, whose data type is monster, and it has a backing variable of underscore current monster. We need to use a backing variable for this property because we want to use the property notifications. And this current monster property is going to hold the monster at the location so the player can battle that monster and subtract hit points from the monster and the monster will attack the player and if the player wins then the player will get the loot from that monster. And I've also added another property, has monster. It's a boolean property that lets us know if the location has a monster. This is similar to the has location to north, south, east, and west boolean properties that we use to hide and show the movement buttons. But instead of using a get, we're using something called an expression body. If you do equal greater than, then that's basically the same as saying return whatever this calculation is. So when you look at the has monster property, 
it's going to return the results of the current monster property not equal to null. It does the, the exact same thing as these gets for the has location to west, but it's a little bit cleaner. And in order to notify the UI that the has monster value has changed when the player moves to a new location, we need to include that in the current monster setter when we raise the on property change notification. So the player moves to a new location, the current monster value changes, it's null if there's no monster at the location, or a monster is assigned if there is one there, and the UI gets notified that the current monster has changed and the has monster property has changed. Next, we need to add in some logic so when the player moves to a new location, we check to see if there's a monster there. We're going to put that in the setter for the current location property. So when the current location changes and we set it to a new location, then we're going to call a function that gets the monster at that location, kind of like we do the give player quest at location. This new get monster at location function sets the current monster to the current location get monster result. And that's the function we wrote in the location class that either returns null if there's no monster there or gets a random monster if there are monsters there. And that's all we have to do to assign a monster to the current monster property. So now when the player moves to a new location, current location gets set to a new value and we try to get the monster at that location. The final step is to modify the main window.xaml file to display the monster information. And I also did a little cleanup in the XAML file. One thing is if you see these less than exclamation point hyphen hyphen and then hyphen hyphen greater than, that's how you set up a comment in a XAML file. And I'm using these so that we can have a little bit easier way to find the different sections of our screen. This file is starting to get a little big, so I want to say here's a comment that this is where our menu is. Here's where our player stats are. Their experience points, their hit points, their gold, their level. Here's where we have the gameplay. And then here's where we've got the location information that we added in earlier. And now we're going to add the monster information underneath the location information. So this should be line 106 if you've got the same XAML file as I have. We have another border, just like we do with the location. We set up a grid with three rows. We've got a top row that's auto height and a bottom row that's auto height. The top row is going to be for the monster name. The bottom row is going to be for the monster's current hit points. And then we've got this row in the middle that takes all the rest of the space, and that's where we'll put the image, just like we did with the location. We've got the location name, the location image, and then at the bottom, the location description. For the monster, we've got a text block with the current monster's name. We've got an image with the current monster's image. And then we add this new stack panel, which is a way to put two text blocks on the same row. The orientation here is horizontal, so that's going to put these two text blocks on the same row. You could do orientation vertical, and then it would do two rows kind of in the same column. But we want this to be horizontal because on the left side, we want to say current hit points. And then on the right side, we're going to have a text block that's going to show the current monster's hit points. And that's what we're going to do to display the monster. I did add a couple other lines up in the top in the window section. Line six and seven in the code, we set up an XML namespace that we call view models. 
And this is basically a way for us to tell the XAML editor. We're going to use some objects from the engine assembly, the engine project, and we're going to use them from the namespace engine view models. That's the namespace where we have our game session class. And then line seven, we say D colon data context equals D colon design instance view models colon game session. What this does is it says for this window, the data context is going to contain an object that's our game session object and it's in the view models namespace. This one we just defined up here on line six. This gives us IntelliSense when we're editing this XAML page so we can see the property names as we're adding in data bindings. You don't need to do this, but it's always nice to have IntelliSense with your code. So now with this XAML file edited, we should be able to see the monsters when we move to a location. The game session property for current monster will be modified and then we'll display the current monster's name, their image, and their current hit points. Let's run the program. And we'll move north. We're at the Herbalist Hut. Move north again, and we're at the garden, and here's our snake. We've got the monster's name, we've got the monster's image, and we've got down here current hit points four because that's what a snake starts with. If we go south, south, west, south, west, now we've got the rat in the farmer's field. And if we go to the east and go to the spider forest, here's our giant spider. In the next lesson, we'll actually have some combat with the monsters. So hopefully we'll see these current hit point values decrease, and when the player defeats the monster, the player will get some experience points, they'll go up in level, they'll get some gold, and they'll get some loot items. If you have any questions about what we've added in, please leave a comment below. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll have a link to the support page in the video description, and you can leave comments there. And you can also go to the support page to get the source code for all the changed and new files.